थैंक यू वेरी मच चेयरपर्सन एट द आउटसेट लेट मी कन्वे माई प्रोफ्यूज थैंक्स टू बंसी भाई दाय केयर टीम द होल टीम ऑफ गुजरात फॉर दिस ऑनर इट्स वन ऑफ द वेरी प्रेस्टिजियस मीटिंग एंड प्रेस्टिजियस कॉन्फ्रेंस विच वी एक्चुअली एवरी ईयर वेट फॉर आई बी वेरी ब्रीफ इन दिस वेरी प्रैक्टिकल टॉक यू ऑलरेडी हैव टू वंडरफुल टॉक्स फ्रॉम प्रयाज एंड द अर्लियर स्पीकर एंड एंड इट वॉज इट वॉज वेरी वेरी यू नो सम पॉइंट्स विच आर वेरी क्लिनिकल वेरी वेरी मच रिलेवेंट टू योर क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस and this particular talk of mine is going to be on on the errors which we come across while giving insulin injections unfortunately the injection technique guidelines are not being highlighted at most of the platforms and uh, though we all talk of insulin though we talk about a glp one analog across the globe rather nowadays after uh, you have so many of newer molecules coming in especially in insulin and injectable glp1 but still uh, we are lagging behind as per as bringing up awareness of injection technique and that too not only for the clinicians and that's why there are occasions that many of the physicians don't have uh, confidence of writing insulin because they are not aware of the recent guidelines and i'll share you some of the good ex personal experiences on these lines so adverse effects of incorrect insulin administration we will have two top topic has been divided into two local reactions that is maybe pain bleeding bruising and and lipodystrophy and lipohypertrophy which is another very important area of our own original research which i'll be sharing it which is actually a, a which is going to be a case based data and we'll talk about the management in the uh, self insulin uh, injection site examination and the prevention so local site reactions now pain is one thing the insulin the moment you advise insulin the first first answer from the patient is no which is almost in 90% of type 2 diabetes i am not talking about type 1 diabetes i am talking type 2 the 90% time they say and type 1 when being diagnosed they will come to you first time they'll say sir koi tablet hai to wo de do na insulin kai ke liye deta hai i'm i'm sorry i'm not have, i'm not good in gujarati i would have good given a gujarati dialogue here but then uh, that's a, that's the, uh, the and that's the obvious even if it is you when you become a patient you also possibly will behave it's a human nature that no one wants injections and unfortunately injection has been shown in our movies in such a bad manner that injection is the worst thing it's one of the punishment you you presume that patient presume that it's going to be and uh, all those old days if you see the doctor is you know uh, is is, uh, is on this big screen with so much of big needle and is trying to poke and you know every, everything so psychologically since childhood we are being made that injection is bad and that is one of the biggest limitation of initiating insulin therapy that's what i per uh, perceive permit it when it comes to pay, uh, pain in with insulin i don't think that's a that's a big issue every one of us are aware that the pain needle now we have 4 mm needle 32 gauge pain needle is, is absolutely painless and that's why our educators they prick themselves and they show see there is it any pain the patient say uh, means i am not getting a pain do you get the pain you prick it yourself if you ask them to prick the insulin the first prick to the patient uh, in front of you i feel the 90% of your job is done so pain doesn't remain as a barrier in my opinion once you ask the patient to do it in front of you not necessarily a doctor because we know dr mathur is too much busy and he will not be able to give time see but but you have a good team of educators around which can be properly utilized and that is why training of these educators is important so every so pain pain i don't think is is a is a important barrier here and uh, there might be way many other causes of pain also someone has already takes all taking insulin suddenly stops insulin you have to find out the reason why i stopped it Bec if he says the reason is pain that there could be other reasons if you reuse the needle multiple times it will become blunt it will cause pain if you have if you apply the alcohol on the needle if you apply the alcohol on the needle to and there are many many people because they have seen in the movie and you there when you are general pack go to a general practitioner you have seen that people are you know wiping out the needle with alcohol stop and with that concept they wipe it out it has a silicon covering which gets destroyed and that's why it becomes blunt and that's and it causes you pain then you have i don't know is it working usually it is does, it doesn't work i don't think it's not so using insulin immediately removing the from the fridge so if, suppose you are removing the insulin from the fridge if it is cold versus a uh, one which is of room temperature the cold version of the uh, insulin going inside that's called as cryo uh, trauma it's called as cryo trauma so that also causes pain so you should allow the insulin to come to the room temperature and then should be given 
and then injecting on the wet surface which is already cleaned by alcohol. Suppose you have put a alcohol here, before it gets evaporated and it becomes dry, you put prick, prick the per person with uh, and then micro drops of alcohol will cause you burning there and there can be local reactions. So these are some important causes of pain which need to be evaluated. Earlier, it, there a recommendation from Mayo Clinic was we had 6 mm for children and 8 mm for adults, which has been changed to 4 mm uh, in pen and 6 mm in syringes. So this is a new thing and our people should know. Bleeding, bruising is again occasional cause, co occasionally caused by, by injections, but it does not actually uh, affect any glycemic control of a patient and it is not troublesome. Less frequently, uh, less frequent bleeding and bruising incidents uh, with the shorter needle. So if you use shorter needle now, everyone knows that the skin thickness of human being, irrespective of the race, irrespective of your, your, your Caucasian or your Asian, irrespective of a fame, male or female, irrespective of obese or non-obese, irrespective of whether a child or an adult or elderly person, the skin thickness remains around 2.5 millimeter. And anything below, above this, that's four millimeter needle which has been recommended, is not going to go to intramuscular at all. And that is why four mm needle is, is acceptable. But if you take bigger needle, certainly in thin build patient, it is likely to go to intramuscular compartment. And that's why we should be trying to uh, use this needle, which is quite safe and don't need to go for 90 degree. Usually we, we have taught earlier when we are resident 90 degree, but here you can go directly, uh, so, so the 45 degree. Now here we can go for 90 degree directly. So reuse of the needle is, is again a controversial thing which can be discussed at the time of panel. So this is a new needle. I don't know whether I'll, you are able to see the pen. I'll put it like this. Yeah, uh, laser pointer here. Yeah. So this is a new needle. And then you, this is the needle after first use. You can see the, uh, see the uh, little curve here. And then you can see the blunting here of the second use. And when you use it for the sixth time, the electron microscope which is 370 times magnified. Needle becomes like this. And you can now imagine how much painful this needle will be once you prick it after five or six times. And these are the, some of the pictures of, uh, of uh, bruising, and this is on the right, right of the same patient's lipohypertrophy. And this is not uncommon, because we never see it, that's why we never realize it. So we have to now make it a practice that every individual who's on insulin therapy, irrespective of type 1 or type 2, at least once in, recommendation once in three months, they say six months, but at least once in a year you see for it. At least, because it's important. And this is another example of brui. There's a third patient is again on, on thighs and, and some local lipo. And this is a patient, I don't think it's the same patient, but, but there's one story which I still remember. Almost 20 years ago, a type two diabetes male patient came to me and he was on twice, put me by me on tw with twice a day insulin therapy. That time there were no fit guidelines. There were no technically, technologically, we are not sound enough. And the, the, the dictum was that every patient is to be taught that if you are taking insulin, you can discard the insulin once it starts causing you pain. Now it could be pain perception with one or so one or two pricks, you can throw it away. But if you can tolerate, you can you can throw it away once you start getting pain. That was the, the recommendation. Dr. Mathur will agree with me. That was the first thing in our residency. That's what. So early days of my practice in in 1990s and uh, below, before 2000 or so, we were doing like this. Now this patient was was put on insulin. Was told, okay, jab tak ye darad nahi hota, tab tak ke lagate raho. And that patient came back to me after nine months. He, in between, he was transferred to Pune. He said, I am unable to go to any doctor in Pune. And because I was your patient, so today I have come to Nagpur. So I just saw, and so I thought, uh, uh, how are you and everything. I just saw, can I see your site uh, taking insulin properly? It was showing lipohypertrophy as well as some of the local reaction. I said, how are you taking insulin? Have you changed the needle? He said, uh, no, sir, you told me till it causes pain, you continue. I am not getting pain even with, after using it for nine months. So, you know, it all depends on your perception. Lipohypertrophy. Uh, lipohypertrophy is of, uh, uh, lipodystrophy is an umbrella term. So you have a lipodystrophy where you have two things, lipoatrophy and lipohypertrophy. Atrophy is now very much uncommon, less than 1%. Lipoatrophy is basically a local immune reaction of the insulin. So when we were using bovine insulin, porcine insulin, uh, even humanized bovine insulin, it was, uh, porcine, it was little common. But because of the human insulins now, the antigenicity part is much less, and we are not seeing lipohypertrophy. Uh, but in our early days, certainly we have seen this, lot many. And lipohypertrophy uh, is a local reaction. It's a, insulin is a lipogenic hormone. 
So when you take insulin repeatedly at the same site, it is likely that there will be a fat swelling, the adipose tissue swelling. We have a you know king person here talking on adipose tissue. I, I, adipose bolne ko bhi dar lagta unke so, <laughs> so sir, this is a thick, firm, raised swelling, rubbery swelling, which is uh, uh, because of taking insulin at the same site. And uh, the, the, there are some risk factors which I'll be showing you. We'll show you our Indian patients. So this is a, a, our another patient where you have lipohypertrophy on the thighs. This is another girl on the both the thighs are such big lipo lipos which was around six by three centimeters on one side and maybe around four or five four by three centimeters on the left side. This is another lady type two diabetes who had one sided li lipohypertrophy on the on the other side. This is the same patient which I showed you. And this one side, lipo, this the 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 brewery also, and the and the some local uh, reaction, and then you have the uh, uh, lipo on the other side. This is a rare case of gluteal lipohypertrophy. A young girl was given insulin by in the gluteal region. A uh, small girl uh, repeatedly at the same side, and they had gluteal lipohypertrophy. And this is a patient who has not never told which kind, which side of he should be taking. Uh, arm, arm was his favorite site, and he has got lipo on the on both the arms. And this again, he was this patient came to me for the first time, and he was he told us that he is taking insulin in the forearms, continuously since seven years, and this was a lipohypertrophy on his forearms. So they're rare things. Now, insulin-induced screen lipohypertrophy in type 2 diabetes, it has also shown, this data is recently published in 2020, that cryotrauma is again a risk factor from the ice-cold insulin injections. So if you use ice-cold or cold insulin, then it can cause increase the risk of having lipohypertrophy because of the cryotrauma. Even in elderly patients, good data coming, uh, again, at two, two, this year's data, 2021, strong association with LH rate, when the hypogly and the hypoglycemic event plus glycemic variability in elderly patient, we never thought the lipohypertrophy in type two diabetes elderly patient can be an, an unexplained hypoglycemia in elderly patients, and glycemic variability can be a big risk factor for any any cardiovascular event. And these are the diagrams. We have younger patients again. Abdomen becomes a site which is more common in elderly versus the younger people. So if you see the epidemiologically, most of the studies say around 30 to 70 percent is the, is, the, is the risk. This is a case report around 82 years uh, patient, again a Western patient, but I have, uh, we have already seen many of Indian patients. And she actually has, has HbA1c 8.3 uh, and uh, she has soft painless swelling on each side of the abdomen. And these are those swellings. Now uh, they were diagnosed that is a lipohypertrophy. Then they have got their uh, resect surgical resection done. And they have uh, shown that uh, uh, on uh, that, that the whole specimen uh, they have they have, uh, they have two masses which have composed of yellowish fatty tissues which were not uh, capsulated with the fibrous tissue which means it was a local uh, re, uh, local action of the insulin the lesion was were composed of entirely yellowish material which was not capsulated the gross findings were uh, compatible uh, with the benign further the light uh, the electron microscopy were carried out and they have shown. The, the fat infiltration was seen in the dermis, and then uh, they, there was some... Uh, uh, now, what they have shown is, I will not go into too much detail of the histopathology, but what they have shown in the, in the slides, that the, the, the histopath has shown that it is not only adipocyte, but the pre-adipocytes. So insulin is going to have, you know, increased proliferation and uh, in the pre-adipocytes as well as adipocytes, and that's why there is increased growth. And this is electron uh, micro scanning electron microscopic uh, data uh, of, of multiple, of course, uh, uh, visions you have. And they have shown that uh, a minor population of small adipocytes have been shown, which is suggestive of the pre-adipocyte proliferation. So this is our own data in IDF Vancouver, uh, which we presented as a, as, a, as a poster discussion. Type 1 diabetes, we found it 77%, and type 2 diabetes, 36%. Those were on insulin therapy. Then we have come across that because this was a small data, we have come out with this publication DTT that in type 1 diabetes, lipohypertrophy, and this paper is one of the unique paper because we have also shown glycemic variability by injecting seven days in the, in the lipocyte and having a very high level of uh, glycemic variability versus another seven days, it is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the normal, normal tissue. And you could document, and this, this, this is possibly the first paper in the world where we have shown uh, lipo versus normal tissue glycemic variability. Prevalence, as I told you, here was shown to be 70%, around 100 patients. 
and it was uh, again uh, according to the uh, the incorrect rotation of these uh, of the uh, was one of the culprit then you had risk factors re reuse of the needle incorrect rotation reuse of the insulin syringes where the significant risk factors glycemic variability uh, lh it was much higher versus those who did not had lmh lh and uh, unexplained hypoglycemia was also very much common in patient who were on uh, uh, on on uh, we're taking insulin at h lipot site versus on the normal tissue so reuse of the needle incorrect rotation and longer duration of insulin therapy was the cause though the longer duration of diabetes and insulin therapy and even the dose of insulin could not be correlated from our data so impact of lipoids around 0.55% higher hba1c mean uh, mean dose requirement 10 units higher higher rate of unexplained hypoglycemia glycemic variability and more frequent diabetic ketoacidosis there's 21% lower insulin exposure and there's a clamp study where they have shown that 20 if you have a if a normal tissue versus the lipocyte you have a exposure of insulin normal tissue is higher that means higher insulin uh, insulin exposure is higher if if you take a normal tissue and there's 70% higher blood glucose in patient who were given insulin at the lipocyte versus the normal side so if you are if you use ins insulin nid needle or the syringe for twice three times or more than six times they increase the risk of lipo lipohypertrophy increases from 50% to almost 80% and the recommendation is insulin to to be used only once a uh, needle to be used only once so injection uh, sites should be examined by every every three months that's a global recommendation uh, it is easier to palpate lipo and, and you can go to the stall of BD uh, though I'm not from BD don't worry about it but there is a disclosure this, this particular session is sponsored by BD but what is important in science is you can, should, should not miss out this opportunity to see the uh, see the model which is kept there and you can see, feel it how the lipo looks like and how, how can you can inspect it and how you can feel it uh, lubricate gel which is which should can be used to examine it and what is the solution is not to allow to take repeat I repeat this sentence not to allow to take insulin at the lipo site for at least one year and start rotating the site properly there's the treatment uh, there is self examination which uh, which you can learn from there education is important for uh, creating educators getting ourselves educated and inspecting inspection of the site is important last slide is seven golden rules for injection technique always inject in uh, in the healthy fatty fat layer near, uh, under the skin 4 mm 4 mm pen needle and 6 mm uh, in the uh, in mm, uh, mm uh, syringes should be used uh, for children less than 6 years very thin adult may inject uh, perpendicular into uh, then uh, then the uh, into the or, or you can just have a fold also recommended the sites are abdomen upper thighs and upper arm and the but, uh, upper buttocks uh, sorry your time is up just just i feel this is the last slide can i just yeah uh, self injection uh, technique has to be told to them L try to see lipo on a regular visit rotation of the slide uh, site and and the pen and needle syringes not to be used for more than once ideally and and safe disposal of needle is important so start thinking lipo so the new thing new new uh, slogan for all of you is now think lipo if you think lipo you will be able to detect it if never think it you will never be able to see it thank you very much for patience